the biggest station in the world playing all of today's hits. You're listening to Instinct Radio. Hello, and welcome to In My Own Words with myself, Kimberly. I'm real. Uh, first, I would like to start off by saying Happy New Year, Happy 2018 to everyone. Um, I have on my shirt from New Year's Eve night, which is winter because we're in a winning season. And for me to be in a winning season, you first have to let go of some things. You cannot hold on to a Super Bowl loss from last year and expecting to try to win in a Super Bowl, get to the Super Bowl this year. You have to let go of some things. And as I open up my show today there are two things that i want to point out i see everybody is posting facts hashtag facts so with my uh, show today in learning how to let go of leftovers i will be speaking my facts and what facts to me means favorable actions celebrating testimonial situations and that is actions that were within my life. They were favorable because they were destined and planned out by God. Celebrating them because I was able to embrace them and share my testimonials of all the situations that I've been through in life up until my age of 47. So that's what hashtag facts means to me. And in my facts of sharing that, um, God, I was allowed to understand that it was by purpose my purpose by God and purpose to me means painful unmistakable realistic power overtaken selfless embraced so I embraced all of that and so that's what my purpose is that will help me to give you my uh, meaning of how I learn and I'm learning to let go of leftovers um, just a little serious but funny uh, side to it some people may not one thing I want people to do um, in letting go is stop thinking people are always talking about you that is hitting you if somebody posts something on Facebook so for me today if you feel like something that I'm saying I'm firing shots I'm not firing shots at you it's just that you can no longer dodge the bullet I don't know I don't throw shade because I'm too busy trying to shine God's light through me um, and lastly, if you think that I am talking about you, it's not possible if I don't even talk to you. So how is it every time you go on Facebook, somebody talking about me, I wonder if that's meant for me. If you don't talk to somebody, how can they be talking to you? How can they be throwing shade at you? And if they are, so what? Let it go. You got to move forward. That's the main thing. Stop keeping all that elementary stuff, bringing all that stuff on Facebook or even in the circle of people that you're dealing with. And maybe you need to think about letting go some of you know, those people. So that's just, that's just my take. I'm coming from the gut of what I feel. This is my platform. I'm going to run it. It's like I told uh, the producers here and my manager or promoter, like I told her, this is my platform. If I have guests, I'm fine. If not, I'm going to roll with it because you don't always have somebody to roll with you. And if you do, that doesn't mean that they're always making sense. So in this season, in 2018, while you're trying to be a winner in a winning season, you need to let go of some of the things that are holding you bondage and keeping you tied up. Um, I posted today earlier, how can you uh, move on to something, but you're not in a movement status? So you're still standing still, so you're just talking. There are no actions behind the movement in which you're speaking of moving on to. So also, and I want to say thanks to everyone that is watching, um, Arthur, Brandy, Tequila Wynn, Lola, Ebony, Thomas, Javari, um, Snake is what we call him, Kim in St. Louis, hello, hello, and everyone else. I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope that it's something that I may say that will register to you, even if it doesn't register to you right now. It'll register to you later that these are some of the things that you have to do and must do in order to be successful in your winning season of 2018. They say 2018 is the number for beginnings. So let's see how you're going to begin. You're still in 
the month of January, eight days in. Some of you are already talking about the negativity, but I'm seeing more posts that are talking about the positive state. So maybe you need to grab a hold to some people that are, that are in the positive state, although their state of mind, their situation may be in a negative state or may seem like it's negative, but their state of mind is in a positive state. So I looked up um, letting go and it said, somebody posted this 312 uh, 2016 and it wasn't a Facebook post but letting go means being willing to allow life to carry you to a new place even a deeper more true rendition of yourself so in order to find a rendition of yourself you first need to know who you are who you are and as I had the conversation with ladies and we just kind of briefly touched on it on Facebook, you first got to know who you are before you can find out the rendition of you. And, but that's a part of you moving on and letting go. And it says holding on means trying to push life into the place of your making or be damned. Um, excuse me, but I'd be damned if I'm going to continue to linger on in something that's no has no meaning for me or to me. I'm just not going to do that. Also, it says, well, in order for me to let go of my leftovers, I had to know my place within myself. I, and I just spoke of that. Spiritual tradition speaks lack of attachment, non-involvement, emotional dis detachment of some. It also means letting go of painful memories, Thoughts, harmful desires, and habits. Some can let go of the habits because how can you let go of the habits but you can't let go of the people? That, that's another big part of letting go. We don't want to walk away because we've been in this environment of people for so long. But if that environment is still keeping you in the same place and you're at the beginning of 2018, then I would think that that's that's a problem and the reason why some of us won't let go is because we're scared to be by ourselves, or we're scared that some of the people that we entertain will continue to entertain with these other people so when we go around and we're going to feel uncomfortable so therefore if you feel uncomfortable especially around somebody that you used to hang with now you feel uncomfortable then you still don't know your place so that that's a part of big part of letting go to me. I, I had to let go and I can go around people and I can entertain people or I could just be me. You, you have to do that. Another thing it says is anger, grudges, resentment, and envy are like ropes that tie you down. You gain nothing from them but lose a lot by holding on to them. You're losing a lot by holding on because there's so much more out there for you to grasp once you let go of all those things that are keeping you tied down. You got to you gotta take a step forward because if you keep taking that step backwards, you're, you're not getting anywhere. It's people say over and over again, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let somebody hold me back. One of the things I thought about when I was coming here and I wrote it down was uh, let go of those um, what did I, how did I write it down? Let go of the follow-up phone calls and texts. If you reaching out to people and people aren't reaching back out to you, you're not doing an interview follow-up. They ought to know you by now. So that's another way. There's, there's some, something else that people need to let go. Everybody can't go with you to the next level. Everybody is not meant for you to be, to be with you in your next season. Job-wise, if you lost your job, Look at what happened. Was it your fault? How can you improve on the next one? But you still got to let that go. You cannot hold on to something from a past employer and take it to a new one and it keeps happening. It's you. So sometimes you can't blame the place where you work. They need to look at you. So whatever's inside of you that's causing you to go from job to job, you need to let it go. Figure out how can you make yourself better and, and let it go. 
Um, I am taking calls or texts. The phone number is 478-569-6474. If anyone would like to call in, ask a question, make a comment, or just share a testimony of how you have learned or how you would like to, you hoping to let go of things so that you can go further um, in 2018 with your growth because you cannot grow if you don't go. So um, I just spoke of some of the things that you need to let go. It's a job. It's a house. Some people, um, as far as myself, had to move, had to um, start over in certain situations and living arrangements. You got to let it go. Uh, ladies, uh, evangelist spoke on Facebook the other day, and she said, so what? You lost that house. Did God ordain that house? Did you pray over that house? Did you seek guidance from that house? I had to call a friend of mine. I'm I'm an open book. I can't lie. No, I didn't pray over the house. I said maybe a prayer in the house before I moved in. But I honestly relocated because somebody told me it would be better for us. But it wasn't better for us. So I honestly did that. I never have done that before. So why did I do it last year? So when I look back, yeah, I loved the house and all that. But it was not of God's plan. So now I had to pay for it, but at least when I paid for it, I know why I paid for it because what I should have let go back then, I held on to it. And this is where I am right here in 2018, but at least I know and I'm taking responsibility for it. That job that you may um you felt that you were doing right as I just previously said, but for whatever reason, that's something else you have to let go. Um the hardest thing of letting go, and I don't want to, I don't want you to take it the wrong way when I speak of family, but you have to let go of the loss of a loved one. I didn't say forget about them. I didn't say forget the memories that you shared. I didn't say forget the love that you shared. Don't forget what they taught you, but you have to let go of their passing. You have to let go of their passing in order for order for you to be able to live on if you continue to hold that day of passing that day of um burial you you can't move on you may think that you can but mentally somewhere on the inside it is tearing you down and once again it goes back to the facts that i gave you at the beginning i know what i'm talking about because i've been there when i lost my brother my brother passed february the 1st 2015 I have carried that weight and carried that weight until this year. Earlier this year, I felt like, okay, I'm all right. I can breathe. I can face another day. I can talk about him without crying because there were times when I talked about him, I would start balling up on the inside, and then the tears would start falling. I'd be like, I can't talk no more. There was a point in my life when I didn't even try to think about it for a long time because I didn't know where I would go. Hello, thank you for calling in my own words. This is Kimberly, and who am I speaking with? Good afternoon, woman of God. Kimberly, this is Cassandra Moyer. Hi, Cassandra Moyer. Thanks for calling in. Wow, you are so awesome, woman of God. I was sitting here looking, listening at you to start following you on last night, and everything that you're saying is confirmation. My boss and I, we were just talking about this on yesterday uh, when you were talking about letting go. Right. So many times we find ourselves still trapped with those grave clothes on, and we have to get to the point of saying it is finished instead of keep it, keep on reliving it. We relive, we relive, and we stay stuck there, and then we can't soar with the eagles, such as women as yourself. You were talking about a home. I lost my home back in Albany, Georgia, some years ago, and when you said I didn't pray over the house, I prayed for the house, mm -hmm. but then go in and pray over the house mm -hmm. um, through two divorces. Let it go. Right. And uh, Yes, ma'am. But I just want to say I thank God for you. Thank God for the for, for your real word today. That is liberating somebody because I know you have liberated me. And uh, just saying that you are the answer to somebody's prayers today. So God bless you, woman of God. Well, thank you so very much. And um, I was going to reach out to you uh, later on today because, like you said, you just started following me um, on Facebook yesterday evening. So thank you for uh, that. And thank you for your words. Uh, that was encouraging coming from you because a lot of times um, I've been judged because I speak 
my real. I can't talk about nobody else real. I can only speak my real. And so that's the only way I know how to be. But I do know because someone shared with me some of the things they went through that it helped me so it may help somebody else. And my goal that I tell people all the time, I'm not looking for a platform of however many thousand people. I want the quality of people versus the quantity of people. That, so that I, is it. Right. So I really do uh, take that wholeheartedly and I appreciate everything that you said. And if there's anything, I always put this out there. If there's anything that I can say or do at any time, and I do have witnesses to this, you can get my number, go in my inbox. I do check my inbox from time to time um, to see if I've missed messages. But there are people that hit my inbox that ask me to pray for them or just talk to them. It could be two or three o'clock in the morning. I am that person. I don't just say it just because it sounds good. I am that person. And, um, just to tell you this before I let you go, I have a friend of mine in Augusta and it, it really touched my heart that she asked me when was I going to be back in Augusta on this week because she wanted me to pray um, over her grandchild and that really really touched me because people don't know they may hear me say it but I am really praying for a portion of prayer power that my grandmother had because it really is what I need right now I'm being attacked in so many ways because I decided to go into the ministry um, so that I yes, can have the backing better backing of when I speak to people I don't want to stand in the pulpit 24-7 um, or every weekend but I do want the full back and so now that I have it uh, submitted myself to going into the ministry um, I'm having a text come after me left and right but I really appreciate your call in today and your words of encouragement to me as well yes ma'am and woman of God you're going through the fire because yea though you walk through the valleys of the shadow of death you ain't got nothing to fear because God is with you he's with you and you're just going through a refinery and when you come mm. out, the beating, the pressing, all of that, because he's going to give you fresh oil, because you are so needed in the world. People need you. Well, People need you. you. Our boys, our girls, our children, our men, our women, husbands and wives, they need you, because people are going to be overcome by the words of your testimony. Well, thank you so very it's much. It's already finished. Mm. Pass the test. Go through the process. It's all a part of the plan. Well, thank you. It and was if... already written, woman of God. And if and at any time you would like to come on and be a guest, you're more than welcome to do that as well. It's, it's my yes, show, but I open it up there, you know, for other people to come on. You never know what yes, you may say may touch the life of someone else as well. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And uh, I look forward to speaking with you soon. All right. Thank you. Enjoy the rest yes, of your day and the rest of the show. Like, likewise. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye. But um, if he's ready, he can come on. You ready? Uh, but as she said, she was speaking about her house. And, and you know, sometimes people go through and lose stuff, and, and they're ashamed. But if it's, if it's in the will of God, which you, what is there to be ashamed of? Because when he finishes with you and what you're going through— it, when you come out of it, they will know that it was only by his grace and mercy. So I don't know. I, I understand. I, I haven't, I've, I haven't been that person that's been ashamed uh, on things that I know I could have prevented, but I did it my way anyway. And that was my situation. I did that on my own, knowing that it shouldn't have been. So I can't fault anyone but myself. And that's another part of Going through your growth and letting go, you have to take responsibility of your own actions because that growth is not going to help you if you can't take responsibility for your own actions. And I am now being joined by a guest, and I will allow him to give his name and give a little of his background, and we will go from there. Greetings, greetings. My name is Divine Rhymes. I am a spoken word artist uh, from Chicago, uh, currently living here in Atlanta, been living here some time and uh yeah I, I do poetry you do poetry and how yeah. did you start with poetry uh it was a very therapeutic thing i started in seventh grade uh started started writing in seventh grade performing in, in ninth and professionally since 2009 oh, okay okay so uh when i came mm -hmm. you heard me say what my topic was you caught some of it um but so what is your take on or what does it mean to you when i said 
learning how to let go of leftovers. What what does that mean to you? It resonated with me in a in a very deeply manner because I'm currently in the transition of doing that exact thing. Okay. Letting go of the past to make space for the blessings that God has for me currently and for the future. Um, it's like the first thing that came to mind is like Thanksgiving or Christmas. Hey, you have the big feast, but whatever that doesn't get ate has to be thrown away mm-hmm. or it goes bad, it spoils. Right. And we had to adapt that same concept not only to ourselves, but also to relationships that we have, behavior patterns and things of that nature. Because we all, to some degree, have things about us that we don't like that we do need to let go of altogether. So that's how that resonated with me, that having to just really let go and pretty much let God. And that's and that's the most important part of letting go. You have to let God. And I'm glad you said that because if you don't let go, well, I'm sorry, if you don't let God, first of all, you're not going to find out who you are. Exactly. And the only way you can find out who you are is to know who you belong to. So once you find out, know who you belong to and find out who you are, then you'll know your place and you will be able to grow. And then you have to accept those things that um, we, we're not in control. There was a guy uh, just a few minutes ago on the bus, and he just came out of nowhere and started asking about, do you know China is coming and all this other stuff? And a uh, man responded, and he said, wait a minute. Man has nothing to do with that. That's all God. So in my situation of letting go and letting God was once I realized I prayed a prayer. And some of my viewers have heard this, but I prayed a prayer in June and July. And I asked God to do what he needed to do to prepare me for my next season. Well, in preparing me for my next season, I had no idea that I was going to lose my job where I had just received a good evaluation, got a raise, and then got a promotion for the position in which I was hired for, Mm. which I wasn't in no rush to take because it would have switched my hours. Then after that, I had a situation, I ended up moving. And in the moving process, um, I'm from Augusta. I could have went back to Augusta, but I, I know what I prayed for. I didn't, I wasn't specific in my prayer. Mm. So in order for him to do what he needed to do, I had to go through this storm. So it put me in an unfamiliar place. But even though I was in this unfamiliar place, I was in a hotel for 30 days. So in, in this unfamiliar place, things kept coming to me of like, this is why you're going through. You've been on this path, but you weren't doing it the way he wanted you to do it. So he had to slow you up. Okay, a lady told me in August of last year, she said he had to break you, literally break you and bring you, build you back up. Now, here it is, 2018, I'm listening to a lady last week, and that's what she said. In 2017, God had to break you in order to build you back up for 2018. Now, I heard this all the way back in August, and now I'm hearing it again right here. It is amazing that you heard that in August and what I personally went through in August uh, with a family matter because it's definitely the same thing, being broken so God could take those broken pieces and rebuild it better than what it was before. Right. Because, um, yeah, and I noticed that a lot of people are having breakthroughs, mm-hmm. like, in this season. Um, so even though don't we don't know what's God's ultimate plan with that, however, it would still be revealed mm-hmm. because almost every day there's someone telling me how 2017 was the best and the worst year. Oh, yeah. And it's the best thing because of the breakthrough, but mm-hmm. the worst because of the journey. I have um, my deceased daughter. Her name is Amaya Renee. And I'm going to start a campaign for her, a nonprofit organization. Amaya in Japanese means night rain. Renee in English text means new beginnings. So the night rain brings new beginnings, hence the saying, we've been endured for a night. So, and I tell people all the time, you have to find your Amaya Renee. What is that? That is the protection of God before, during, and even after the storm. Mm -hmm. So... I share that to everyone who's watching and who's listening as well. Find your Maya Renee, because once you find that, you will find solace and you find so much peace, not only within yourself, but within your environment 
as well when you do so, no matter what stage of the process that you're in. Right. And, and, and that's true. And, you know, um, there are a lot of people that talked about their 2017. You'll be surprised. But believe it or not, there are more people that had storms and uh, situations that won't talk about it because of what I just said. They're ashamed or embarrassed. But my thing is people want to talk about their blessings and their breakthrough, but they don't want to talk about the process that it took them to get there. And in order for you to get there, you got to do what? Let go of what you were going through in that storm. What caused that storm, you have to let it go. And that's why even when some people get to it, because it was planned, it's, it, it's not going to be as great as he wanted it to be for you because you have to, he's breaking you down, he has broken me down to the fact that he wants me to see. You had all this here, I allowed it, but I allowed it through other people. So now the people that I may allow through this time, you're going to know it's only, it's only coming because I say so. You know why? Because he's connecting me with people that I didn't even know. People that I didn't even know were on in this area of them life to be able to help me be a blessing, open the door for me to be an instinct radio, open the door for me to now have candy you know, open the door for me to be able to do more things. And so that's why some people won't get there because they're not letting go of those people or those things that cannot help them to get to that next level. That is so true. Um, I have an analogy. Uh, just think about going to the grocery store mm -hmm. and you have all of your groceries in your hands, but you need to get in the car. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? You have to let go in order to continue on. Mm -hmm. And for me, personally, I was holding on to so much stuff. And God was like, all right, I see you. Boom! Knock everything out of my hands mm -hmm. to create the space. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're human at the end of the day. And we will make decisions based off our own logic and not our faith. So in that process... I've learned how to trust God more, mm -hmm. definitely so. And I share that with everybody else. Uh, whatever situations you know that you need to let go of, let go. Because when God come through and he move, all the time it ain't peaches and cream. Mm -mm. <laughs> I know. It ain't been peaches and cream, but nowhere near. It ain't like water. <laughs> Dang. It's, it's, that fire is real. <laughs> so... Were, I know you couldn't have been always, you weren't always like you are now speaking in the way that you're speaking in the light of, you know, that God did this and you did, and you know, he's doing that and this is what he will do. So when you got to this point, reached this point, did you lose some people along the way? You letting go of people is different from you losing and they're let. They let you go, but you were still holding on. So how did you handle that? That's a part of letting go of leftovers as well. I would say, um, you know, I I actually kind of been like this all my life. Okay. Um, it's just a higher and a higher level understanding that comes with it. Um, the process itself was challenging. Mm -hmm. It's um, the biggest thing was getting over my own ego. And even deeper than that, getting over the need of feeling, the feeling that I need to be accepted by others. Um, so once I got over that, I was like, hey, all right, it's my world, my universe, God is in control, but I don't have to continue to sacrifice the best things about myself for pennies, mm -hmm. like casting your pearls before a swine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, people who will be in my life, will be provided, and will know my value and know my worth instead of diminishing it. And it was it was tough. Some people that, that walked out, some people I had to let go, is very close to me. Some being family, uh, some being parents. <laughs> so it's... We and the biggest revelation, one of the biggest revelations from it is knowing that I'm not alone. Mm -mm. I'm not the only person going through these things. Mm -mm. I'm not the only person who feel this way. Um, 
in the earlier segment, I was speaking like why I spoke on why we're not having more conversations like this within our household and not within our communities about the, our humanity, what makes us human, the things that we connect with. Um, even though that topic was a little bit different, it still ties into this because it's still something that needs to be said. It's still a conversation that needs to be held. Your story matters. My story matters. Mm -hmm. And whoever's listening, your story matters as well. We're not in this alone. And we have to break that cycle. Well, the, the one thing <clears throat> that you just said was human. First of all, people tend to forget we're human until it, something happens to them. And that's one of the things, like, with me getting closer um, to God. I've always, I tell people, I used to walk. Now I'm, I'm running. I'm chasing after him. And so someone asked me, well, are you not going to still have fun? I'm always have fun. It's just a certain level of what I'm going to do versus what I used to do, you know, because I'm still human. God knows that I'm not perfect. So if you know I'm not perfect, then you know I'm human. When I get perfect, then I'm a, I won't be here. I won't be talking to you. Exactly. And so that's why some people can't accept the fact of going on and trying to do better and get out this clique of people or this circle of people or whatever they want to call it because they don't know how to separate. I can do better within myself. I can be a better person. But every now and then I can go over here and mix and mingle with these same people. But I'm still human. That's, that's where some people mess up with the church. The pastor, he's human. The evangelist, she's human. So what? I went, we went out to eat yesterday, me and three church members. And the one lady that we went with, she said, oh, well, I wanted something to drink, but I can't go because of such and such. I said, baby, guess what? Kim is going to Kim is gonna sip because I'm human. If that's what I want to do, that's what Kimberly's going to do. Am I going to get drunk? No, I'm not going to get drunk. Am I going to be posting all these pictures on Facebook that I'm drunk? No. But if you want to know, do I? Yes, I am because I'm human. If that's what I want to do, that's what I'm going to do. At the end of the day, that's why some people don't come to church. That's why some people don't entertain you if you talk about the Lord because they feel like they got to be perfect. You got to let people know that this is a way of life. Christianity is a way of life, but it's not a perfect way of life. It's never going to be a perfect way of life. We're in, it's a process. It's a growing thing. It's, you have to grow to certain things. I was in the church two, three years ago. I was going Sunday going Sunday, going Sunday, but on that Friday before, I was going out every Friday, too. So the difference now, I'm going more, I'm active, but am I going out every Friday to support a band? I was going to support a band and other people. No, I'm not, but that's the difference in my growth because I know I'm not going to feel good. I'm not worried about what nobody else say. I'm going to be, what's the word? Um, okay, think of the word, but I, I, I'm going to, it's going to bother me on the inside. It's not gonna bother anyone else. What what it will do to someone else is they'll say, "Oh, well, she going to church every Sunday and she doing this. She she's a hypocrite or whatever they want to call it." But for me, it's gonna beat me up on the inside because I know I can't mix and mingle with the two. I can't get up here and go sing in the choir and be a courtesy guild member and welcome people in the church, and then they just saw me over here each and every Friday night. I can't do that. You understand? There were times where I was in this place. And I talk to people and I minister to people even at that place on Friday because I'm, I'm a talker, I'm a speaker, I speak to people. But at the same time, I'm human. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm trying to cover up for what I'm doing. I'm just trying to let people know that you can still have this life. You can still grow away from people. But at the end of the day, nobody is perfect. And if we stop looking at people like we're supposed to be perfect and feeling like we still have to blend in then we we can let go of the leftovers that we need to leave alone that is true i remember as a kid um back in the 90s there was a billboard that had a school of fish on it that like school of yellow fish and there was this one green fish that was going the opposite direction mm -hmm. i tell people all the time be that be the person that doesn't go along with the flow and not just in the sense of being rebellious or anything like that, because that the power that comes with that is the choice, is the power of choice, knowing that you're choosing your own path. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. It's okay for everybody who goes along with the flow. It's okay for you not to go along with the flow. We're all different for a reason. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know how you was just spoke on how you know on Fridays you would say even though you mm-hmm. were still ministering, you know for mm-hmm. you, that's 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 not your lane. And that's perfectly fine. I wish, I wish, we would stop criminalizing and demonizing people for the choices that they make, especially when it's for the betterment for themselves. We all are different. It's okay. It's it's perfectly fine. And even, you know, speaking on what you was talking about in regards to religion, you know, being human within Christianity, I personally feel that that applies to all religion. No matter, at the end of the day, you're learning how to connect with the Most High. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's your path, cool beans. I don't look at you no different. I respect you for who you are. Your character is not determined by your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because some people have some crazy lifestyles but they're good people right so and when when you do that i feel like that's ultimately being righteous but you know some people a lot of people they're living behind they're not living what they're speaking because what i mean by that okay I'm I'm going to church and I'm you know doing all this stuff and I want you to think I'm this perfect person, but then you see me out somewhere, and then I have this glass in my hand and you're like, that's she shouldn't be doing that. So then when I see you, I try to hide it, make it seem like it's not yep. mine. So I'm putting on a front or I'm being fake. So that's why a lot of when I hear a lot of people say I'm not fake, read the definition and then look at yourself in the mirror and determine are you really being fake or not determine those things because you can't and then you said pe- people don't like to take responsibility for themselves so that's why they're so quick to look at someone else some people are holding on to baggage that they should have let go in high school that's why they still don't talk to some people from high school because they haven't let it go they don't even some people don't even go to a class reunion because they still holding on to this woman took her boyfriend back then or whatever i i have a girl that wrecked my car brand new car but I, when I see her, I talk, I talk to her and speak to her because it's my fault. I was a dummy to try to help teach her how to drive. But why would I still be holding on to that right now? And we're in 2018, and when I see her, I don't speak to her. That's crazy because guess what? One of the true things, she done went on by her life. She went on by her life as soon as she found out I wasn't going to try to make her pay for it. The one thing about holding a grudge is that you're the only one who's suffering. Exactly. And that's why I try to tell people, please let go of people that have already let go of you. And you can't be, like my mentor, Georgia Me says, my, my best friend, she says, you can't be 27 different people for 27 different people. Mm-hmm. And that's just facts. You have to be who you are at all times. And yes, I understand some things traumatize us in our childhood and our adulthood, but what about the recovery? What about the aspect of moving past it, mm-hmm. letting go, learning how to make better decisions, learning how to hold yourself more accountable so you can have a healthier life for yourself? Cause that's what it all boils down to. When, when, surely we live, surely we die. We, I cannot answer for your life. You cannot answer for mine. And when we understand the depths of that, it brings so much more clarity, and it's so fulfilling. And it, even more than all of that, it brings peace. Keyword: find, find your peace. And it's the crazy thing about it. It is so simple the con- and I could say it in the earlier segment it's just as easy as it is said done this is one of my mantras personal mantras it's just as easy as it is said done the complicated part is finding the motivation or the drive to do whatever it is that need to be done mm-hmm. yes the road now I'm not saying that the actual situation itself is easy because you know God take us through everything. But when you make the decision, you making the decision within yourself to say, hey, you know what? Despite it all, I'm still going to do this and mm-hmm. I'm going to stick to it and I'm going to hold my. Making that decision is ultimately the complicated part because the process is going to be what it is, whether you make that decision or not. Mm-hmm. So you're cutting yourself short at the end of the day by not choosing to have the drive to do what it is that you really want to do. No matter and, what it is. And that's why so many people fail and they're in their situation longer. And I'll, I'll admit, and that's why I've been in a situation year after year after year. Well, no, I take that back. In, in this process, because I was like, I knew what it was and I knew why it happened. But I 
when I first started back to work, I didn't have that get up and go because I was still trying to figure out and I was still praying and trying to say, okay, Lord, okay, this is what you put me through and I know you're putting me through it. But I didn't have that get up and go. I, I basically, because I could call my dad and I got my little unemployment, I let it run out to the to the very end. <laughs> I was putting in applications. Don't get me wrong. I was putting in applications. I was interviewing. I but understand. Then, I'm but then, <laughs> but then, when I was going on these interviews for management and it came and said that, you know, they love me and they love my resume, personality, but it wasn't coming. So I said, okay, well, Lord, I guess you don't want me to do management because if I do management, then it'll be too demanding for me to do what you are setting me up to do. So me, I sat back and said, okay, well, let's see what the Lord going to do. So me doing that, two weeks went by and there was nothing coming in, no income, no nothing. And I got to a point, you need to stop calling your father. You need to do this. This is this this is what you ask for. You ask God to um, do what he need to do to get you into this next season. So you need to get your motivation back. You need to get up and get out there and make a move. Let go of, okay, maybe this is not what he want. But in order for you to get to where you need to, to go, you need to show him, okay, I'm going to start making some movement because I wasn't making any movement. And I, I definitely understand you. <laughs> I, I could, I definitely feel you on that. Because um, currently in life, I had to have that same conversation with myself. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people don't know, but um, I suffer from depression. Um, well, correction. I used to suffer from depression. Okay. Because c- c- we exit in that season. Um, especially, And this is another conversation that needs to be held in our community as well. Because I'm quite sure that some people out there listen to this like, all of that is fine and dandy. However, I still go through this, or my situation is a little bit different. Um, mental illness in the black community is something that gets put on the back burner or gets swept under the rug as if we're completely immune from it, failing to realize that we're still human at the end of the day. Um, it's a conversation that needs to be held, but even no matter what illness or diagnosis, keyword diagnosis, that was put up on you at the end of the day, you still have that choice within yourself. That's why they say you are not your diagnosis. Don't say that I am depressed or I am bipolar because mm-hmm. you're attaching yourself to that. Just like if anything else, like you say, okay, I am a liar or I am a thief, then you're speaking that into existence. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, when it's a diagnosis, like I have been diagnosed with that, but that's not me. You're making that separation. And there's been many cases, many of stories that we know, even some personal within people who we know in our lives, that could have had some terminal illness or mental disease or whatever it may have been that they was going through, and look how God brought them through and escaped. Mm-hmm. So it's like at the end of the day, no matter who you are, what you are, what you practice, in regards to religion, I feel like that's a universal spiritual law. It's like when you acknowledge the higher power and the higher being, and you realize that you didn't get here by yourself, and you really tap into that source, it brings a lot more clarity. When you get a chance, November the 20th, if I'm correct, I did a show on depression. Mm. Full hour. And if I remember correctly, I was by myself. But um, I had a quite a few people that reached out to me after the show and spoke on how I enlightened them and how I gave them clarity on some things that they didn't know about. So when you get a chance, go back and look at that. And I'll be more than happy to do another show with you. Awesome, awesome. Also, I do uh, an an event that's called Lead on the Table with Kimberly Real, And what we do is we sit down and we eat and we do just as you would do at home. We talk about certain topics. And so that's a topic that I think needs to be brought up in one of my events, and I'd be more than happy to have you come on with that as well. The thing that I like that you said um, was um, you don't put that on yourself because that's that's something that you have to know you can get past it. Um, you, You made me think of when I said be your own backup. So from what you said, you realized that you had God, but you were your own backup because you did not allow yourself to continue to say, I'm depressed. You didn't put that label yourself as depressed. There was a point where I, uh, they wanted to put me on medication because I was just 
file. Yeah, that right there. And so I said, no, I'm not going to take this medicine. My mother even said, I think you need to take this medication, Kim, so it can calm you down because you just, you just fly off the handle. You let everything get to you and so quickly, and that's not good. So I said, no, I'm not going to do it because when I read it and it said, oh, it caused drowsiness and all that, I can't even take Tylenol with codeine in it. So what do I look like trying to take? this other medication so I had to let go of some people that were causing it one was my ex-husband I got a divorce mm. and that was a part of peace so when you spoke of peace I understood that too because a lot of people don't understand peace especially when you're going through a divorce people don't understand peace but happiness you cannot be happy without having a peace of mind. Because if you don't have your mind, then you can't think of the wonderful, great things that you can accomplish and how you can love yourself and you can be better to someone else. So peace is the, after you know whose you are, after you know who you are, then peace comes next. Exactly. And let me share this with everyone. Because um, I know I'm not the only one out here. I'm 29 years old. I'll be 30 in July. Uh, when I turn 29, for the first time in life, I obtained self-love. And I know that I'm not the only one out there. And I recently completed a training course to be a certified peer specialist for the state of Georgia. So pretty much my own recovery story is all I need to help people in their recovery. Mm -hmm. And also, while I'm on this topic, just quick sidebar, uh, for those who are looking for a safe, trusted, non-judgmental place and free, <laughs> let's add that to it, uh, come down Thursdays at 8 o'clock to, no, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, not 8 o'clock, but 6 o'clock every Thursday, Core Studios, downtown Decatur, uh, with Alexia Jones, myself, and Avian Reeves uh, with Rise Theater. Um, and also on Tuesdays, she hosts the forum for it's nothing but the ladies, nothing but the women. And so many people have had breakthroughs just in life. And it's just a lot of time, it's, people just need someone to talk to. They're not even, you know, they may not have something to the extent of a mental illness, but they need someone to just talk to. So we provide that safe place. So I definitely extend the invitation to everyone out for that. But yeah, um, you have to, you, you definitely, you definitely have to find, one, make the decision within yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't know what direction you're going to go into, at least you know that, hey, I don't want to be in this space no more. Right. So, and stand firm on that within you and watch how doors open up. Watch how God moves. Because my understanding with that came from being around these individuals, having that safe place and seeing that, oh, wow, so I am not, I'm diagnosed with depression, but I'm not depression. Right. And so on and so forth. So it definitely, like I said, when you're around like minded, having the right crowds around you, having the right proper support system. Mm -hmm. um, even building your wellness recovery action plan, RAP for short. There's so many things out here that the state is providing and even more programs that the state is not providing, just everyday people like ourselves to help us. We just don't know. So I love platforms like this so where we can share this information so that way we can educate each other on these opportunities. And a lot of these things be free. And a lot of these are right in your a lot of these opportunities are right there in your own community. And if you don't have one, then start one. It's just that simple. One of the things um, uh, my kids always say, "Mom, you taught everybody. You taught in everybody." And I thought about it when you were, you know, you said you spoke with someone. My thing is, you never know who's going through what. You never know how. You don't have to pour out your heart. If you just sit down and genuinely speak with someone, the conversation is going to flow. Yeah. And they will relieve whatever it is that they need to because sometime, and I, I spoke of this um, on my show when I was speaking on depression, some people have friends 
but they don't even feel comfortable talking to those friends. Yeah. So that's why they hold it in. Then two, if I call my girlfriend, sister, and I say, girl, I'm going through this, first thing they say, well, girl, let's go get a drink. Girl, let's go out to eat. We never got to talk about what I had going on. Exactly, and failing to realize when you're in that current state, and you add it, you follow it up with depressant like alcohol, it only makes it worse. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people use that as their numbing agent or escape goal or self diagnose. Um, That's why some relationships fail. Yeah. Because there's no communication. If, we, if the problem is here in our house, why do we always run outside the house and take it over here? when inside our house is what need to be fixed not not me and my sister on the outside so once they can't talk to each other they go and talk to their homeboy if the homeboy is no good they go talk to somebody they just ran into some female and then there it is so it's broken oh and also hold yourself responsible when you're having these conversations because you know who you could talk to who's going to give you the answer that you're looking for rather than the answer that you need right so, and that's a big difference. We all done that. But like, well, I'm gonna call such 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 because they're gonna. I know they're gonna agree with me, even though you may not say it verbally. But you feel that inside, and you call them, and sure enough, they confirm your feeling. But it doesn't make it right. Well, see, I I have a group of people. They don't agree with me. My A one that mm-hmm. does not agree with me does. I'm not gonna say she doesn't agree with me. Let me fix that. That will not take my side. Is my mother. My mother has given me the best tough love ever. And through whatever uh, growing up I have been through, I always tell people I, I would tr- wouldn't trade her for the world because I can call her. And my mother wasn't always a, a minister, but she always gave me tough love. She always, she didn't take a side. Even when it came down to my ex-husband, my mother don't pick sides. She, you know, they said, don't go running and telling your mother this. Don't go running and telling you, you know, talking about your husband. My mother was not that person. She would tell me, Kim, now you know you were wrong for that. Or, Kim, now you know you need to sit back and let him do this, that, and other. That's how my mother was. So my mother was good at that. And, and she, people she, like she, that she are that gems. Work. Yes. And then I have Karen Williams, Tanya Bryant, um, Chandra Brown, and one more person I can't think oh, of. Oh, yeah, I get shout out about it. Yeah, they get <laughs> shout out because <laughs> they know me inside and out. And they are they are the true people to be like, I don't care what you – you can get mad. You can call yourself spoiled. I'm going to tell you this right here and that right there, and that's wrong. That's why we are still where we are today. And a friend named Tracy Williams, Garrett. But that's why we are where we are today because they don't sugarcoat. You don't need a friend that's going to sugarcoat and always agree with you, as you said, on every single thing. And that's one of the things I had to look at coming into 2018. Let me see who really is there and who has been there all this time telling me my right from my wrong. Going through this situation and moving and all this stuff, who was there to tell me my right from my wrong? Or just to give me a pat on the back and say it's going to be all right. Instead of saying, Kim, what what could you have done to prevent this? Although it was destined in the plan of God, what could you have done? What fault do you take of your own? And see, that's why communication is the key to everything. It's communi- communication is the key to relationship. Communication is the key to your prayer. Communication is the key on the job. Communication is the key to your peace, even if you're communicating by yourself, because a good author takes has a journal. If more people, instead of, Texting sometime out of anger, write it down and release it. I'm glad you said that. Write it down and release it, and then maybe you can fix it up a little bit better so it won't be such a big problem in your household, or it won't be such a big problem on the job, or it won't be a big problem with your your sisterhood that you're supposed to have. And I had to learn that. Like I said, I used to just fly off the handle, fly off the handle. I'm trying to get better, but now that I have the tax on me, you know, every now and then it pops up, but go ahead and say what you want to say. You know, um, I mean, you were speaking about taking things outside of the household. One of the things, even if you're not able to verbally communicate, you can write it down, write a letter, something. Mm-hmm. And typically when we do things out of anger, it is nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten, majority of the time, the wrong thing to do. Because we have to sit back and dissect that. We're in a very high emotional state that we're not able to make conscious decisions. And that's how things not only get lost in translation, but how we hurt people unintentionally. Mm -hmm. Or if we wanted to give you the ugly truth 
or whatever it may be, give you our truth, let's say that, it's a right and a wrong way to do it. You, you think some people are scared of their own truth? Oh, yes, definitely. So that's why they can't accept your truth? Definitely. My mother's one of them. I love her, but that's what it is. Well, <laughs> we have those people in our lives. So we Not taking shots at mama. You no, know, no, I still no. love you. But yeah. So before we get ready to go, what is your take on letting go of leftovers? I guess to sum it all up, um, first let go. First address yourself. Look within and be real with yourself. Mm-hmm. Whether you have to write it down, whether you're sitting back meditating, but have that real talk conversation. First start with yourself, the things that you need to let go from within. Then extend that to your innermost circles, the circles that you are a part of, your home, your work life, whatever it may be, and then continue to have that ripple effect, and you will see the change within itself. And if you're the smartest person in your circle, you need to change your circle. That's, 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 that's even a quicker and easy way to letting go of the leftovers. Um, I agree with everything you said. I echo. Also, don't be afraid to start over. Yes. Don't be afraid to rebuild. Because that's why some people won't let go because they're uh, they're afraid to rebuild. They're they're scared to start with nothing and start over. It's not fun. I can tell you it's it's not exciting, it's not fun, but I know that this starting over here will be so much more meaningful because the foundation that it will be built on is so different from last year. Exactly. And that's where I get my excitement from because I don't have I don't have a lot of the issues or a lot of the people or the person in my life that was a big distraction in going and in coming into my next year. So that's why I know when God finishes with me and give me my breakthrough, it's going to be so much more greater than when I left Covington and I moved um, out here to Love Joy in this nice Ooh, house. Ooh, you in Love Joy? Yeah, in that house. <laughs> so that's why some people just got to know you cannot be afraid to start over from the bottom up and rebuild because that foundation is like building – Building a masterpiece mansion, it, when, it, when it finishes and what that breakthrough and those blessings are going to look like, it's just going to be so beautiful, breathtaking, and all that good stuff. But I want to thank each and every one of you that were able to tune in. If you didn't catch it from the beginning, please uh, feel free to go back after we finish, and you can catch it from the beginning. Um, the topic today was letting go of leftovers, meaning letting go of everything that's a distraction, don't mean you any good, that has kept you in bondage of 2007 and past years uh, that and you don't need to carry in 2018. I want to thank my guest for coming in and sharing, and he will be back once again. And very quickly, let them know your name and where they can follow you. All right. Um, once again, my name is Divine Rhymes. That's D-I-V-I-N-E-R-H-Y-M-E-Z. And you can find me on every social media outlet, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Sorry, I'm not on Tinder or Christian Mingo. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, um, if you are in the Atlanta area, I do extend the invitation to Rod Cedar. If you're not, um, definitely create it, create it in your own community if it's not being provided. And uh, I just want to leave you all with with these last two bits. If you're looking to start, like how you were saying, to build that process, find a support group. If you don't have a support group, find one person. Even if you don't have no one, be the lone wolf. You got God at the end of the day. And how Georgia, me, always says at the end of her segments, I'm not going to let the devil and you stop the God in me. Own that and live it. Be righteous. Last thing. Thank you. Last thing, be on the lookout for um, a laid on event coming, laid on the table event coming up soon. And also the month of February, each and every Monday, we will be talking about relationships. So if anybody would like to join in, come into the studio and be a guest. It's going to be hot topics. It's going to be Kimberly somewhat uncut, <laughs> just to be honest with you. We're going to talk Ooh, about relationships, relationships from beginning to end. I want to be Thank there for that Thank you once one. again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.
the biggest station in the world, playing all of today's hits. You're listening to Instinct Radio.